Hey, what's up? It's Ben here. So today I want to show you guys how to buy dividend stocks on the Webull desktop app. And for those of you guys who are new here, I do a lot of tutorials on the Webull platform itself and talk a lot about business and money related topic as well. So, and if you haven't already signed up with Webull and fund your account, feel free to do so. They're still giving out free stocks. And the good thing about Webull is that they do offer paper trading over here and they offer options paper trade as well. So if you haven't already signed up, feel free to do so. I'll put the links down below and other tutorials down below below as well. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys first how to identify a dividend uh, paying stock and actually buying the stock itself on the Webull desktop platform. So one thing's, uh, so first things first, usually I'll just start off as uh, go to the screener. So if you're not sure where to find this, this is the desktop version. It's on the left side. If you hover over this little icon over here, it'll pop up screener. So hover over that, click on that. So not all stocks are uh, dividend paying. Uh, you have to add, know that at first. And also dividend paying stocks could be monthly, quarterly, or yearly as well, or semi. So it just all depends, but most of the dividend paying stocks will be quarterly. So once you hit to the screener, you wanna identify the dividend paying stocks. So to do so, click on the filters on the left side and right over here, it'll bring you up, you, it'll bring this page up. And right now it has the default uh, filters. So I'm gonna uncheck all these actually, and then start from like basically scratch. So exchange, I don't really care, but this is for the sake of simplicity. I'm gonna run it really quick so you get an idea of it. Of course, your dividend paying stocks is gonna be totally uh, different from my dividend paying stocks. So it's up to you on how you wanna go to do uh, more research on it. So right now I'm gonna choose the last price. So normally, you know, it's up to, you know, how people wanna structure this. Uh, they can start from uh, something like, you know, $20 to $100 that they feel comfortable buying a dividend paying stock. But the uh, amount for the price itself doesn't really matter. It just matters about the company overall, if it's a, if it's a good company that you wanna invest in or if it's a terrible company you're, you wanna invest in. It doesn't matter if it's a $200 stocks. Of course it does, sometimes a fraction of shares come in play, but that's another topic. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do a really brief, you know, filter. So last price, I'm gonna choose last price. I'm gonna have that in maybe uh, dividend yields is the main thing. So there's a difference between a dividend yield and a dividend. So this dividend will show you the overall payout of the year and this dividend yield will show you the percentage that you'll get for the entire year. So make sure that you know the difference. Usually if I'm choosing a dividend paying stocks, I wanna look at the overall percentage of the returns I'm gonna get. So maybe something like, you know, 5% on average that I wanna go into a dividend stocks. So that's one thing, last price, uh, wanna check out uh cash flow maybe cash flow i mean you know what something from you know a uh, company to be cash flowing good uh and then let's see net income you want something that's probably positive uh have a positive net income not a negative net income for a company and those are hmm, probably it and then click on market cap you want something that's probably big in a decent side so so that's my filter i'm gonna click this out uh, let's see market cap 1.3 billion to to whatever so uh, that seems about right last price maybe maybe something around like twenty dollars uh, to you know 65 ish something like that uh, dividend yields um, five to eight percent and of course, if you be greedy on the dividend yield, let's say that if you want something like way up here, like 96% dividend yield, obviously companies will not be able to support something like that, even over something like over 15%. It's really hard for a company to shout 15% of dividends to their investors. So a good range, a good healthy range is something between like uh, see zero to, to max it out like 10%. 10% is reaching to really high limits already, but you wanna keep it below that uh, figure. That's my personal opinion and not financial advice at all. So uh, roughly about five, let's say five to 8%. Net income, something, you know, something positive. This is actually pretty good. 40.41 to, to whatever max out. Cash flow, something above, uh, above zero, but you don't want a negative. Let's say, just say this. All right, this is totally random. Uh, so, so far I have 34 matches, right? After all these filters in place. If I scrub down some of the companies, you might know some of them you don't. And if I'm scrubbing down, there's a Verizon right over here. 
and there's MO uh, Tobacco Company. So those are the company that I know, and there is Leg right over here, I know that one. So these are pretty, you know, decent companies. Uh, Ryzen, like, so I'm familiar with Ryzen. I'm gonna just go ahead. Price is 37. If I hover over here, let's see, slide this to my right. I have, uh, let's see, dividend yield right over here, 6.89, which is pretty good. It falls under that dividend range that I set. And of course, if you scroll up, if you just, uh, this is not 100% accurate. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, oh, sometimes you get picked up, you know, by these little guys that's below. Maybe they dropped uh, within a uh, couple of days or so, and the filter didn't catch that. So even though you set a filter at five to eight percent dividend yield, it might catch some of these right over here. So just FYI, so don't feel alarm or anything like that. So that is that. Let's say so I did I did identify a uh, dividend, so it's Verizon. And if you want to really want to be safe and cross check this. You could definitely do so. So I use this right over here, dividend.com. So this right over here, you could identify a dividend paying stock if you want on here, just to make sure. So Ryzen right over here is VZ. So I'm clicking on that and it has all the data of the dividend of the dividend itself, of the stock itself. I mean, so you have your payout ratio, 55%, which is good. So the company's not using a lot of their money to pay dividends out. Uh, year of dividend increase, 18 years, that's good. Frequency, quarterly, and on average, since Verizon is a uh, communication, telecommunication kind of company right over here, communications average yields is 2.62. Uh, which which is on average that's how much you pay out but in this case Verizon pay out about like 6.9 uh, percent in dividend yields so and by the way it, I do talk a lot about dividends uh, I, and I made a couple of videos about dividend paying stocks as well feel free to watch those videos to learn more about you know maybe the ex-dividend dates or when you get your uh, payout for dividends I did a little bit more but uh, uh, I'll put some video links down below to for you to check out if you guys like to check them out. But for a brief rundown, uh, you have this timer right over here. So X dividend day is April 6th. That means that if you buy before April 6th, you'll get the next payout on uh, May 1st. So, and the next payout is gonna be uh, 0.65, all right? So 60, around like 65, 65 cents for your next payout. And if you scroll down a little bit more, so which is this dividend.com uh, website is pretty handy. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. Or I just want, I just, I just like it because I use it a lot. And then you see the payout right over here when their next uh, ex dividend dates is and declaration uh, and the payout amount as well. So all the information is right here. This is just for you to, uh, you know, cross check, make sure everything is right. Uh, and I'm gonna just minimize this right over here. So back to the screen. So once you identified the uh, the stock that you wanna use, just go ahead and go over here and I'm clicking on the stocks um, icon right over here. Uh, and this will bring me to another screen right over here. So default, I wanna say it looks something like this, but if you can't for some reason, you know, see something similar to this, hover over to this little, um, little three dot icon uh, thing right over here. Actually, this is, uh, let me, let me, let me just zoom out a little bit over here, just for the sake of this, clicking on this little three dot right over here, you'll see these, uh, widgets, uh, you can add a widget. So basically add the order of these over here. So these are the widgets that they have. So you could click on that orders and then find the one for trade and you can add it on there. And if you need position on orders as well, you could totally see that and add it on there as well. So, so assuming that this is default uh, for you guys, you could go ahead and just use it as is. If not, just click on this little icon and it'll help you add the widgets for you. So right now on the top right, there's this little search bar. Right now it's concealed, you can't see it, but I wanna show you. If you click on the little search bar and type in VZ, you'll find the stock. So in this case, it's Verizon. So I clicked on it and now it pulls up this uh, Verizon chart. Uh, and by the way, you're probably not gonna see uh, RSI or the MACD. This is just an add-on by me. But default, I wanna say that you can see the trade uh, uh, order right over here. So right now Verizon's uh, selected. So now you could do options right over here. Note, news, financial analysis, and order for corporate action. Corporate um, actions, you'll see the dividend payouts as well over here. So if you're not familiar with dividend.com or anything like that, you could just actually see 
all the stuff over here and you could be fine with it and you could go ahead and knowing that it's a dividend paying stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to this side of the screen and select buy over here and then order type for the sake of this example, I'm gonna choose market. Obviously you could choose the limit price as well and I'm gonna choose quantity, I'm just, just do one, time and force day and if everything checks out, if you like it, just hit buy and it tells you the order and then place buy. And actually it went through, I go through orders over here. Uh, should get filled right over here. So I got Verizon right over here with the market average price that got filled was 37.79. So now that I bought this, let's go back to dividends.com right over here. So it states that right over here, uh, the ex dividend date is when it's gonna, you know, market saying that, oh, who owns the stock? So it's April 6th, right now it's March 7th, right? So because I bought it at uh, March, uh, March 7th, it's before the April 6th, right? The payout that they're gonna be paying out is gonna be on May 1st, then I'm gonna get 0.65 uh, cents, about 65 cents right over here. So if I wait out to May 1st and hold the stocks, uh, still holding the stock, I'm gonna be paid out 65 cents. So there you have it. Hope this was kind of intuitive for you guys. If you guys are still confused, feel free to you know let me know in the comments or watch a couple of my tutorials on the Weeble platform itself. I do sometimes I do app version uh, and I do the desktop version as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll catch you all next week.